At the horn smelter, two types of materials are processed, mineral concentrates and recyclable materials. Concentrate. Our smelter has a long and rich heritage. Annually, over 700,000 tons of copper and precious metal-bearing concentrates are sent to our smelter. We receive this concentrate in powder form, with a copper content that varies between 10 to 40 percent. We are leaders in meeting the needs of international mining companies. Recyclable materials. Our expertise in this field has been developed over several decades thanks to our world-class practices and the ever-increasing need for the processing of end-of-life electronic materials. The volume of these recyclable materials is becoming an important environmental issue on a global scale. New legislation in several countries requires that these materials be recycled, and this trend is expected to continue to expand to more and more countries around the world in coming years. The Horn Smelter is proud to be the world's largest recycler of electronic materials, contributing to the reduction of the environmental impact of these discarded products. The Horn's processes can handle a wide range of materials at the end of their useful life, from obsolete printed circuit boards to manufactured copper products. All these materials contain copper and precious metals that, once refined, will be put to use to manufacture new products, thus restarting the life cycle of the metals. From the principle that nothing is ever lost or created, everything that enters our site leaves transformed. Recyclable materials and concentrates contain copper, precious metals, sulfur, and iron. This diagram represents the flow of the materials processed at the horn smelter. Copper and precious metals emerge as anodes at the end of this transformation. In the concentrator, the iron will be extracted and safely stored in our tailings impoundment area, and sulfur will be captured and converted into sulfuric acid. But first, we must properly receive the material. Material receiving. Material arrives at our site by truck or by rail. Each transport unit is weighed using a certified scale before and after unloading in order to ascertain the accurate weight of the delivered material. Sampling is then carried out. Our sampling techniques vary according to the type of material and our expertise in sampling is known around the world. A team of engineers and technicians constantly monitors quality control based on a systematic statistical approach. For example, to ensure precise concentrate sampling, three pipes collect material from up to 96 locations in a rail car. An automatic sampler captures a representative portion of recycled material in a conveyor chute. The sample represents the entire lot. The objective is to obtain the most accurate sample of the delivered material. The utmost attention must be paid to ensure the reliability of the sampling process and maintain our reputation for integrity. Our process allows for the production of multiple sample bags, one of which will be kept in case we must have the sample content double-checked by an independent expert. A second sample bag will go to our laboratory, where its exact metal value will be determined to ensure that our customers receive what they are entitled to. The laboratory team uses the most modern techniques to provide quality, precise, accurate and prompt analyses. Our fully computerized lab eliminates the need to manually enter data. Our technicians and chemists process over 75,000 samples a year, including those used to control our extraction processes. They are well aware that these results have a direct impact on production operations and on the value our customers receive. The reputation of our state-of-the-art lab is renowned in the industry. Our customers appreciate the know-how and integrity that characterize us and that form the cornerstone of our reputation. The recyclable material is now ready to be taken by conveyor and fed into the Naranda reactor. We've now arrived at our second tour. The copper extraction process is divided into four stages. The Naranda reactor, the Naranda converter, the desulfurization vessels, and the anode furnaces.
The first stage of extraction is carried out in the Naranda reactor, a technology developed by our research and development team in the early 1970s. The recyclable materials and the concentrates are blended in feed bins. The material is projected into the vessel by a high-speed slinger, where it is heated to a temperature of 1200 degrees Celsius. At this high temperature, the material liquefies. The molten metal is then exposed to oxygen-enriched air that is used to oxidize the impurities in order to free the copper and the precious metals. The oxidation reaction generates an enormous amount of heat, hence eliminating any need for fuel. A part of the sulfur contained in the concentrate is oxidized to form sulfur dioxide and leaves the vessel with the gases. The iron, along with other impurities, combines with the oxygen to form oxides that float on the surface of the molten bath. The oxides combine with silica, forming what is known as slag. The copper and precious metals sink to the bottom of the vessel, forming a dense molten phase called mat. At this point, the copper content has reached 70% and will be transferred to the second stage, the Noranda converter. Put into operation in 1997, the Noranda converter is the result of the hard work and ingenuity of our process, research and development team. It enriches the reactor mat to a content of 98% copper. Once it has been poured into the Noranda converter, the mat from the reactor first forms an intermediate phase called white metal, whose content is 80% copper. This liquid layer is further oxidized in order to free the copper from the sulfur to create semi-refined copper at 98% content. This copper, which collects at the bottom of the vessel, also contains the precious metals and will go on to the third step of purification, the desulfurization vessel, where the last traces of sulfur are eliminated through oxidation. The molten copper is then sent to an anode refining furnace. At this stage, natural gas is used to remove any remaining oxygen in the copper that comes from the desulfurization vessels. Now that it has reached 99.1% purity, the copper is finally cast into anodes that are solidified and cooled through contact with water. Each of our 340 kilogram anodes symbolizes the commitment, know-how, and excellence of all our employees. These 99.1% copper anodes contain added value in the remaining 0.9%, thanks to precious metals such as gold, silver, platinum, and palladium. They are transported by rail or truck to the CCR refinery in Montreal. This plant proceeds with the final refining stages of copper and precious metals, and produces byproducts such as selenium and tellurium, as well as copper and nickel sulfates. The final refined copper product is a cathode, which has been purified to over 99.99% and is sold on world markets.